Let's close our eyes for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege we have once again to be at the Bible study today. Thank you, Lord, for the love and the interest you've given to your children to come here to study your word. We're asking, O oh Lord, that their coming will not be in vain in Jesus' name. That your grace will get more into our lives so that we'll live the life pleasing unto you in Jesus' name. We pray as you show us all these things in the scriptures. Your purpose of revealing, your purpose of teaching, your purpose of leading us into these truths will be fulfilled in our lives in Jesus' name. Keep us at a large. Keep us awake that as your word comes forth, it will enrich our lives in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to just focus on you, looking unto Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And then not to be diverted by any other thing away from you, even as we listen to your word this moment, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. I welcome every one of you to the Bible study tonight. We're still in 2 Peter, and we're in 2 Peter chapter 2. When we started 2 Peter chapter 2, I told you that that chapter begins with the danger of false teachers, false prophets, and their deadly influence in the church. Now the chapter is ending. We're at the end of the chapter this time, and we're in verses 20 to 22. And the end is giving us, that is the end of this chapter, is giving us the description of the deterioration of defiled apostates and backsliding followers and you need to understand here now that there is a kind of progression that is to go from one level to the other and this level to the other as you look at the lives of the unbelievers and you look at the lives of the backsliders first there is falling from grace and then there is a hardening of the heart and then there is a falling away or you can put it this way first there is backsliding and then in that backsliding, there is a hardening of the heart inside that sin, inside that corruption, inside that backsliding. Eventually, the backslider does not remain an isolated, independent backslider alone. He begins to influence other people too, to backslide and to go astray. And not only that, he hardens himself to the point he becomes, listen to this, an apostate. He is so hardened now. And it's like it's incorrigible. And the direction, the downward direction is going, is irreversible. It becomes an apostate. This is the deterioration that backsliders eventually get to. Who are the apostates? Apostates are those who are falling away from the grace of God to the point of permanently hardening their hearts against the possibility of restoration or recovery. Apostates also, they actively serve the interests of Satan in pulling down other people and pulling them away from the truth. They are not satisfied to remain in corruption alone, to remain in pollution alone, or to remain in their backsliding alone. They want to influence other people so that other people can backslide with them. That's the way of the backslider in his downward journey to becoming an apostate. These are the false prophets who deny Christ. The false teachers who deny the atonement and the sufficiency of the blood of Jesus Christ. They get into shame. And then eventually as they go the downward journey, they glory in their shame. And deliberately, they want to pull others into the pool of that shame and degradation. Backsliders first fall from grace. And in the process of time, if they do not return to the Lord, they become so hardened that they become instruments in Satan's hands to deceive and to destroy other souls. I need to show you something here. And when you pick a backslider and you pick a believer, listen to this now, the backslider is going down and down and down and down. The believer, if he knows his right, the believer, if he knows his position, the believer, if he knows the promises of God, the believer, if he knows the power of prayer, the believer, if he knows the authority of the word of God, the believer, if he knows everything that has been provided for him, as a backslider is going down and down and down, the believer is going up, up and up. I pray you will go up. Yeah. 
in Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. I'm reading to you there from verse 18. You'll see what we're saying here. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, it says, The path, but the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. That's the believer. If the believer knows his position, if the believer knows the, the provision that the Lord has given him, if the believer knows the promises of God, if the believer knows the power of prayer, if the believer knows our partnership with Christ, if the believer knows everything that has been provided for us, and he takes care to make sure that he gets into those privileges and the things provided by the Lord, he goes up and up and up, and his path, the path of that just man, it goes, it's shining as a shining light, and it shineth more and more unto the perfect day. That's why you find the believer, he starts with salvation. And then, as he knows the promises of God, he goes to sanctification. As he knows the promises of God more, he goes into immersion, baptism in the Holy Ghost. As he knows the promises of God more, he'll go into the gifts of the Spirit. As he knows the promises of God more, he'll go into service of the Lord, or the power of the Lord is going up and up and up. But the backslider is the downward journey. That's what we're looking at today, the downward journey of the backslider. The topic tonight is the deterioration and defilement of apostates and backsliders when well, second peter chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 20. second peter chapter 2 verse 20 for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the lord and savior jesus christ they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning and you see here, they go from bad to worse, from worse to worse. They're going down. They're becoming more and more polluted. Their degradation is increasing every time. The stench, the odor, the evil, the spiritual sickness in them is becoming worse and worse. And it says they go from one level of sin to another level of sin to another level of sin to another level of sin until they get into the bottom of the well and the pool of sin. You cannot even see them. They're totally immersed in that evil. And then in verse 21 it says, For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandments delivered unto them. And then he gives us a picture. He paints a picture now and he goes into the animal world to even be able to find an illustration to illustrate the lives of these backsliders who are going from bad to worse. That's why he tells us in verse 22, it says, But it is happened unto to them not that it's even going to happen already now as the apostle has been looking at the people i'm sure he would have seen as he looks at the people all through the bible he can see the life of the backslider i'm sure he can if he recollects he can think of korah Dathan, and abiram how they started their unrighteousness and backsliding in a very little way and it went from bad to worse i'm sure he would have remembered achan how he was part of the people of god and it went from bad to worse i'm sure he would have remembered something because something he had a part of god even his past was prophesied before he was born how that man went little by little by little by little and he went down and down and down until he lost his ministry and he lost his eyes he lost his power he lost everything going from bad to worse i'm sure i would have seen judas iscariot because judas iscariot was one of them and he went from bad to worse originally it was just a little comment uh, uh, why is this woman wasting this oil why doesn't he put she put all this is on jesus christ that's just a little comment and little by little he began to steal from the bag not only that he now went to the pharisees and the scribes and said what are you going to give me i will deliver him until eventually he committed suicide backsliders go from bad to worse did he remember demons because demons was where paul the apostle ministering together and that man eventually he went because he loved the present world in fact when we look at the books of history 
the books of history tell us that after Demas backslid, he didn't just stay at that level of backsliding, he went to join the company of lawyers, the people that were trying, the believers, throwing them to the prison. When they discover that they are, they are believers and followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, they go from bad to worse. That's why he uses this picture on them in Second Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 22. But it is happened unto them. According to the true proverb, the dog is returned to his own vomit again. And the soul, that means the pig, the swine, the soul that was washed to a wallowing in the mire. I pray it will not happen to you. We have divided the study into three parts. Number one, the deteriorating states of apostates and backsliders. Deteriorating state of apostates and backsliders. You women, you understand? When you pack a tomato in a bag, and then there is no fruit, you just put it there, and the heat of the day is affecting the tomato, and the tomato is getting rotten and rotten and rotten, and it may look as if the one on top is still all right, but when you look at the bottom, and the ones in the middle, everything is totally gone until everything is totally rotten. And you that keep the poultry, you understand, when well, you have all these eggs there, and you didn't check up, and one of those eggs is already uh, getting bad and rotten, and in fact it's cracked, and then it's affecting other eggs, and the from bad was deteriorating stage deteriorating state of the apostates and the backsliders number two is the destiny and the suffering of apostates and backsliders the destiny where do they end what happens to them at the end of history at the end of the day when they close their eyes in death when they leave this world because today they may laugh but in eternity it will not be a laughing matter today they may glory in their shame but in eternity, there will be no glory. Today, they may brag and boast and tell us everything is still going on fine. But in eternity, there will be no joy and there will be no delight at all. Because the final stage of the backslider, the one that dies in sin, is destiny in eternal punishment and eternal suffering. That's why you need to consider very well today. That's why we sang that song of you. Have you counted the cost? Have you counted the cost? If your soul should be lost, even now, it may be. That the line you are crossing or you have crossed, have you counted? Have you counted? Have you counted the cause? Point number three, the degrading sinfulness. The degrading sinfulness of apostates and backsliders. Come back to number one. Number one is the deteriorating state of apostates and backsliders. I mean, Second Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2. I'm reading there to you from verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wait there for a moment. It means these people were saved because it says they have escaped the pollutions, the corruption, the defilement, the uncleanness, the evil habits, the old nature. All the evil things that the worldly people were doing, they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It means it is not just moral people. These are real believers. These are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ because it says it was through the knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior through that knowledge and the power of the grace of Christ in their lives. It was through that they escaped the pollutions of the world. They were saved. But then it says, if after that salvation, after they were born again, after they became new creatures in Christ, after old things passed away and all things became new, after the grace of God, the power of righteousness, after the righteousness of Christ was imparted and imputed unto them, after they had known the Lord, not just knowing mentally in the head, but in the mind, in the heart, in the soul, in their spirit, and there was a change of life. If after they had escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein. That is, they were born again, they were saved. After that salvation, they were again entangled therein. You know, there are people that will want to deceive us with this, their doctrine of eternal security. Once saved, always forever saved. 
Once your name is in the book of life, always, forever, your name in the book of life. Once you have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, always you are kept away from the world. They deceive us. And they want to tell us that forever, once you are saved, you are saved. Maybe there are people that don't believe that in the head. They say, no, we don't believe eternal security. But there are people that say they don't believe eternal security. They act, they live, as if there is eternal security. They call themselves believers. And then all the evil things they vomited before, they go back to them again. Because the Bible says, in Galatians chapter 2, verse 18, if I build again, the things I once destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. And there are people that the life of righteousness, the life of obedience, the life of humility, the life of holiness they had before, and the life of separation from the world, the life that was clean and clear from the pollutions of the world that they had abandoned before, they go back to them again. And they will still be walking and they will still be moving and they will still be relating with the believers as if everything is all right. I'm still a believer. That's eternal security. If you don't have eternal security in theory, you have eternal security in practice. But it says, if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus as Savior, they are again entangled. That word entangled in the original. It means to be involved again. It means to be intertwined with that thing again. It means to be snared into that thing again. It means to be trapped with that thing again. And then it tells, it gives you another word there, and overcome. That is, the things they overcame before. The lust they overcame before. The pride they overcame before. The immorality they overcame before. The temptations they overcame before now overcomes them. That's why it says, if they are again entangled therein and overcome, then it says, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. What, what, what this means is, is, is this. When somebody backslides, and it goes back to the world. Why is the latter end worse with them than the beginning? In number of reasons, number one, Satan had been waiting. And Satan had been saying, don't give your life to Christ. Satan had been saying, don't abandon all these sins. You can't do it. Don't give up all these laws of the flesh. You can't maintain it. No, I will do it. I will do it. If the fire is burning and the rain is falling, I will follow the Lord. The devil, I bind you. I cast you out. You've been bragging against the devil. And the devil is saying, all this talk, talk. Then eventually you backslide. And you come back into his kingdom and into his net. And the devil said, the mouth you used, cursing me, casting me out, insulting me, abusing me, trampling, I will trample upon the devil. Now you come back into my kingdom. He'll make the life of that fellow worse than it was before. That's why it says the latter age of that individual is worse than the beginning. Number two, reason. When somebody backslides, he joins other sinners in the world. And those other sinners will be making fun of him. They will be saying, <laughs> you came back, deeper, deeper. Papa, deeper. Pastor Holiness. You are here again. Now, as they are making fun of him, to show boldness and to protect himself so that they will not be teasing him and torturing him, he will try to practice evil in such a way that they will say, ah, this man is, uh, is, is serious, is, this one is uh, even greater than us. He will become a champion in sin. That's why the latter end of them is worse than the beginning. Number three. The flesh had been starved, denied of all these various things before. Now, because he was born again and was living a holy life and a righteous life, no immorality, no fornication, no sin partner, no boyfriend, boy enemy, no girlfriend, girl enemy, no 
person partnership to transfer AIDS or HIV has been living a righteous life and the body has been starved. The body has been saying, give me, give me, give me. I want sin. I want sin. No, you cannot have sin. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. Resist the devil and it will flee from you. Then you backslide. And the flesh said, now, here we are. I've been asking for this sin all these years. And you denied me. And I didn't have this sin. Whether we like it or not, even if you don't do it now, you're a backslider. For that hell, you are going to hell. So, if you don't enjoy life now, you will still go to hell because at least you are backsliding. So, the fellow will say, okay, if I'm going to hell, let me know what I'm going to hell for. And he will give himself to the world completely. That's why. The evil a backslider practices is much more than the evil he was committing when he wasn't born again. Look at it yourself. That's why it says, For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Look at Jeremiah chapter 7. In Jeremiah chapter 7, reading there from verse 24. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 24. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart. And they went backward and not forward. Backsliders, they went backward and they went not forward since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt until this day. I have even sent unto you all my servants the prophets daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they acted not unto me, nor inclined their ear. Listen to this. But hardened their neck and they did. What's the next word? was than their father's deterioration the deteriorating stage of apostates and, <coughs> and backsliders in um, Osea chapter 4 Osea chapter 4 reading there from verse 6 Osea chapter 4 verse 6 my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because because thou hast rejected knowledge I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of God, I also will forget your children. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore will I change their glory into shame. It goes on to say they eat up the sin of my people. They swallow it. They just delight. They enjoy that sin. And they set their heart on their iniquity. Their minds are there. They dream of sinning. They think of sinning. They plan sinning. They imagine sinning. And when the opportunity is there, they just go for it. And it says in verse 9, And there shall be like people, like priests. And I will punish them for their ways and reward them their doings. For they shall eat and not have enough. That is, when they get into all those evil things, it will not satisfy them. Then they go more, they go more, they go more after those things. They shall commit wardom and shall not increase because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. Wardom and wine and new wine take away the heart. In verse 16, for Israel slideth back as a backsliding hellfire. Now, the Lord will feed them as a lamp in a light place. If frame is joined to idols, let him alone. That is, is glued to idols, is joined to idols, is heart, is mind, is desire, is worship, is adoration, is on idols, and is going from bad to worse, and it looks like there's no remedy, let him alone. Their drink is sour. They have committed wardom continually. Her rulers of shame do love give ye. That is, the more they do, the more they say, we we'll want more, we we'll want more. And that's the condition of backsliders. In Osea chapter 13, verse 2. And now they sin more and more and have made them molten images of their silver and idols according to their own understanding. All of it the work of the craftsmen, they say of them, 
let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. You see here it says, the sin more and more, more and more in the Psalms, Psalm 36. Psalm 36, reading from verse 3. In Psalm 36, verse 3 and verse 4, it says, the words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He has left off to be wise and to do good. He has abandoned being wise. He has given himself to foolishness. And he has abandoned doing good. He has totally given himself to doing evil. In verse 4, he, he deviseth mischief upon his bed. He plans it, he imagines it, he dreams it. He just wants, he's eager to do evil. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. He abhors not evil. He doesn't shun evil. He doesn't turn away from evil. He just wants evil and grabs evil and embraces evil. In verse 12, they are the workers of iniquity. There are the workers of iniquity falling. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. It comes to a point when a backslider, a sinner, has been doing something so consistently that they become cast down and to even change becomes near impossible. In Psalm 52, Psalm 52, reading from verse 3, Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness. It comes to a point where the sinner just loves the lying, loves the deception, loves the evil, rejoices in it. Thou lovest evil more than good. And he just wants to do it. He's looking for opportunity to do evil. And whenever there is no opportunity, he wants to create opportunity even to do evil. That's the situation of the backslider. After they knew the Lord, if after they had escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end of such backsliders is worse than the beginning in verse 4 thou lovest all devouring wars O thou deceitful tongue and then he tells him verse 5 god shall likewise destroy thee forever he shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living Here come to the new testament in second timothy chapter 3 2 Timothy chapter 3, reading there in verse 13. Here we're told about the degradation, the deterioration, the pollution, more and more evil of those backsliders and evil men and sinners. They eventually become seducers, enticing other people to do evil, and they have no mind of changing at all. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, reading there in verse 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13, but evil men and seducers, evil men and deceivers, evil men and false prophets, evil men and false teachers, evil men and those that are hardened in evil to deceive and destroy other people, but evil men and seducers shall work wars and wars, deceiving and being deceived. In Matthew chapter 12, here is actually what happens to them. And there is a connection of the evil spirit and the devil with those backsliders. In Matthew chapter 12, reading from verse 43 to verse 45, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he, that unclean spirit, walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then, says he, I will return to my house. He's claiming the man as his house. He's claiming that backslider as his house. The unclean spirit went out of the man. The uncleanness, the pollution, the defilement, the evil, and the sins of the world, all those things were cast out when the fellow became born again. And also the connection of the demons and evil spirits, all those things were cancelled when the person became born again. But now, in the backsliding stage, the evil spirit said, I'll go and check up my house. I will return unto my house. Whence from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty. Christ is gone out of that place. The word of God is gone out of that heart and swept and garnished. Decorated in uh, wanting somebody, wanting an, a visitor. And then it says, then he goeth. He said, I will not take place, I will not take it again by myself alone. 
and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter in and dwell there and jesus said on the last stage of that man is worse than the first even so shall it be also of this wicked generation so you will see then what the lord is telling us that the, um, the backsliders and the apostates and that is why that's why it will surprise you and the people that you knew before who are living righteous and living holy encouraging you and counseling you maybe even preaching to you and they will preach so straight and so wonderful that you will just hate sin you'll say i don't have anything to do with sin again i listen to sister so and so i want the life of sister so and so and i want the life of brother so and so i will not touch sin again when those people that encouraged you before that counseled you before that prayed with you before that preach the word of God unto you before to make you love and cherish and embrace and accept and practice holiness. When those same people, when they backslide and you look at their lives and you hear their preaching, I hope you don't hear, but if you hear their preaching, if you listen to their counseling, these same people that encourage you to flee worldliness and to escape for your life and become holy and righteous because now they are backsliding. The kind of things coming out of their mouth. Now they sin against knowledge. They sin against the truth and the gospel light they have. They sin without shame or restraint. They bury their godly convictions and now they are willing to seal their very soul in eternal doom and danger. I pray it will not happen to you. I come to point number two. Point number two is the destiny and the suffering of apostates and backsliders. The destiny and suffering of apostates and backsliders. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. Ah, you see, what kind of thing is this? Better not to know the way of righteousness. What does that mean? Better not to know Christ. Better not to know the way of holiness, the way of the cross. You say, what does this mean? Better not to be born again. Better not to even come to the entrance of the kingdom of God at the beginning. He said, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Are ah, you saying this, this is terrible? What does this mean? That it is even better for a person not to get born again than after getting born again, the person eventually backslides? Oh, Jesus explained that very well. Hey, look at Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Reading from verse 23. Why don't you go back to verse 20. Then began he to upbridge, to rebuke. The cities wherein most of his mighty works were done. Because they repented not. He said in verse 21, Woe unto thee, Chorazin. Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for, si for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. Now verse 23, verse 24. And thou Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which had been done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. Look up here. What Jesus Christ was saying. He said, did you see those Sodomites? The people of Sodom and Gomorrah. They were sinners. 
In fact, the Bible says they were sinners exceedingly in the sight of the Lord. And those people of Sodom and Gomorrah, they perished because the cup of their iniquity was full. And they went from a burning city to a burning hell. They left this world through fire. And they have continued in the vengeance of eternal fire. All through eternity they'll be like that. And now Jesus said, Capernaum. You have seen the Savior. You have seen the Messiah. You have seen his miracles. You have heard his word. You have heard his messages. You have beheld his mercy. And yet you remain in sin. It will be more tolerable for the people of Sodom and Gomorrah than for you. Which means their punishment will be greater on the day of judgment than the, ju than the punishment of Sodom and Gomorrah. Which means there are degrees of suffering in hell. Listen. Somebody who is a sinner who never heard the gospel, but he had the Bible, but he didn't read. He committed sin. He died in sin. He goes to hell. But he's going to have a degree of punishment in hell. The person that had the opportunity of hearing the gospel and we pleaded and we prayed and we preached and we counseled and we helped and we visited and we invited, we did everything. And yet, he remained in sin and died in sin. He will go to hell. His punishment will be higher. Higher degree of suffering in hell. But there's somebody. He got saved. Became born again. He enjoyed life eternal. Fellowship with the Lord. Bad dreams were taken away. Sicknesses were healed. The joy of the Lord filled his heart. He walked hand in hand, side by side, with Almighty God, with Jesus Christ. He prayed and God answered. We prayed for him and God answered. For a time, he enjoyed the fellowship and the goodness of the Lord. He ate God's manna. Every day, when he was in fellowship with the Lord, he drank water out of the rock that followed them. For the rock that followed them was Christ. He had the shield. He had the protection of the cloud by day and the fire by night. And the Lord protected his life from witches and wizards. There was nothing he wanted. The Lord did not do for him. Before he knew the Lord, he had nothing. He knew nothing. It was after he knew the Lord, the Lord gave him a job. The Lord gave him a wife. The Lord gave him children. It was after he knew the Lord, the peace of God settled in him. Even his family people were saying, now we see through what is happening to you, it is good to serve the Lord. After all those privileges, he backslid, went back to the devil, closed his Bible, threw the Bible away. We came to him, we, his friends, we, the people that love him, we said, ah, brother, what's the matter? He says, which brother? Who is your brother? Get out of my house. It's because of heaven. Heaven? Is it a wood and stone that will be in hell? If somebody is going to be in hell, leave me alone. I'm going to be there. You see, brother, why are you talking like this? I said, if hell is made for somebody, somebody has to be there, I am going to be there. And you pleaded, and you prayed, and you fasted, and you visited. And he said, no. Get away with your Jesus. When that fellow dies, the place he gets to in hell, and the degree of suffering, punishment in hell, be much, much greater, much, much greater, much, much greater than the people that didn't have opportunity to know the Lord before. That's what the Lord is saying here. That the people that knew the Lord before, the people that were born again before, I want you to begin to recollect now, please. Your friend. That's your brother. That's your sister. She sat on that pew where you're sitting. She sang. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. She sang with us, grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that is greater than all our sins. Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that is greater than all our sins. That brother, you remember him? Sitting in that same place we are sitting now. You shared the Bible together when you were reading. He sang with us. When I surveyed the wondrous cross, on which the Prince of Glory died. He said, he said, he said, he sang with us. All my pride... I count but loss and pour contempt on all my pride. 
He himself, he sang with us, forbid it, Lord, that I should go. Save in the cross of Christ my King. All the things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to his blood. While the whole realm of nature mine, all these are present, they are not enough. Love, so great and so deep and so divine, demands my soul, demands my life, demands my all. He was sitting there with you. He sang. You saw tears coming out of his eyes when he sang, I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Jesus, my Savior, I surrender all. He went out of that seat, out of that singing. He went into the world, into the darkness. We don't see him anymore now. And when we try to reach him, and when we try to talk to him, and when we try to say, brother, you are a worker. You are a preacher here. You are a counselor here. You are praying for other people. Brother, what am I looking at? Seeing in your mouth, is that a cigarette? What are you doing? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I'll take you to the pastor. Which pastor? You mean Mr. Kumui? Take me there. I will tell him that you are no more in the church. Go and tell him. Am I afraid of that man? The person he used to love. He says, that man. And we do everything we can do. But he's gone. Where will they spend eternity? These people that knew Christ. These people that loved Christ. These people that they, they consecrated everything to the Lord. Now, they're totally gone into the world. Is there somebody there having a concern for them and saying, if these people die in this condition, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'll not deceive you. Hell will be hotter for backsliding, deeper life people than for Anglican, than for Catholic, than for Baptist, than for the people that are out, are they out there and they didn't have the opportunity of studying. All these things we're studying. We go from chapter to chapter and we go from verse to verse and, and, we, and we talk about salvation, we talk about restitution, we talk about righteousness, we talk about everything you can talk about. We teach everything plainly and clearly that people will say, I never saw it in this wise before. If somebody gets out of this place after hearing everything, after praying, after experiencing the grace of God in his life and he goes into the darkness outside and he perishes in sin hell will be hotter much much hotter for that deeper life backslider than any religious man out there that's why Jesus said it will be more tolerable for the people of Sodom and Gomorrah than for the people that have seen his goodness and his light and yet they turned away in Luke chapter 12 Luke chapter 12 Verse 47 and verse 48. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. He knew his master's will. He knew his Lord's will. He knew the word of God. He knew the verses. He knew the chapters. He knew everything. And yet he did not according to the word of God. He'll be beaten with many stripes. But that, but he that knew not... They don't come here. He that knew not, they don't know the doctrine. He that knew not, they have not been exposed to the deeper teachings of the word of God. He that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes, he shall be beaten with few stripes. He will still be beaten. He will still be beaten, but with few stripes. But the ones that know, and yet after knowing, they go back into the pollutions and the corruptions and the darkness of the world. It will be beaten with many stripes. In Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 20. Ezekiel 3 20 says again when a righteous man does turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity. And I lay a stumbling block before him. That's to check him, correct him, to make him re-examine his way. I lay a stumbling block before him but he will not change. And then it says... He shall die. Because he doesn't change. Because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he has done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at your hand. That is, those of you that forget that we still need to reach out to these people and you don't worry about it anymore. You say, well, they are gone. That, that, that's their decision. That's not only their decision. You have a part to play. When a righteous man, a righteous lady, 
when they turn from their righteousness. And very many indications and things around them are telling them, go back to the Lord, go back to the Lord. You know your roots, you know where you are coming from. All these other places, I'm still going to church, but be sincere, be sincere. I'm still going to church, I'm still going to church. You know, you know better than that fellow preaching there. You know that these people were the dancing and everything. You know this is deception. You know this is not church. You know this is politics. If it, you know the truth. You know the truth. You've been in the place where the truth is clearly revealed and taught. And you still remain there. In that place of deception. And you're managing, managing. You can't manage and get to heaven. If you die in that condition, you'll perish. And then the people that know that they are going to those places of deception and they refuse to warn them and they refuse to bring them back. The blood, it says, it requires your hand. In Sephaniah chapter 1. Sephaniah chapter 1. Reading to you from verse 4. Sephaniah chapter 1 verse 4. I will also stretch out my hand upon Judah. And upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place, and the name of Shemarims, of the priest, them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops, and them that worship and that swear by the Lord, and that swear by Malcolm. They swear by the Lord on one hand, they swear by Malcolm on the other hand. They mix everything together. A little Bible, a little tradition in a backsliding position. And them that turn back from the Lord. They were with the Lord before. It says they turn back from the Lord, I will punish them. And those that have not sought the Lord, nor inquired of him. All of them will be in hell. Those that never sought the Lord. Those that were never born again. And then others that turned from the Lord. That's the reason we need to warn them. We need to talk to them. We need to plead with them. Sinners who die without having salvation in Christ will be separated from God all through eternity. They will suffer the vengeance of eternal fire. But not only that, those who have heard the message of God's mercy and God's love and God's grace and God's salvation, and yet they have rejected it, they will suffer more. And then another state, those that were saved and they later backslid, they will suffer much, much, much more in hell if they die as backsliders. And what do you think about this? The false prophets and the false teachers and the apostates who have sinned. But not only they have sinned, they now even deceive and lead other people, multitudes, out of the narrow way, leading them into the broad way of perdition. Uh, uh, please look up here. You know, when we teach, we have to be very clear. You know, these uh, singers, they give quality time to learn the music, to learn everything they're doing. It takes time. If you have joined the choir, you understand. Patiently, there's a leader there. He's trained them and trained them and trained them and trained them. To blow that trumpet, to play that violin, takes time. It takes the grace of God, takes discipline, takes effort, takes everything. Now, if somebody backslides and he goes into the world and he establishes a pop house, whatever, and then he's looking for a trumpeter, instead of looking for another sinner who never knew salvation, who never knew the Lord, and pick that sinner outside and play his trumpet for him in his pop house. He doesn't do that. He comes to these people dedicated to Christ. He comes to these people that Christ is watching over, part of the bride of Christ. And he talks and visits and brainwashes and convinces until that fellow takes the trumpet dedicated to Christ, takes it to the shrine of Babylon. And that person who had been playing trumpet here, dedicated to the Lord, this backslider, not interested to backslide alone. It takes a dedicated person like that with a dedicated instrument and takes it to the shrine of Babylon. And the fellow is singing and playing there. And that fellow eventually dies and goes to hell. Tell me, the person that pulled him away from his dedication, from his faithfulness, from his loyalty, from his consecration, the fellow that pulled him away until he went out there and eventually got to hell. 
that person will suffer much, much more in hell. That's why, if you know the Bible, you'll be talking to these people that say that they had gone in there, they're reaching for our people. The people here that we pray, we kneel down, we consecrate, we surrender everything. Before a person becomes holy, ah, it takes effort, it takes prayer, it takes consecration. Before a person becomes sanctified, humble, before God can reach down into the heart of man and take the pride in that heart and take it away, it takes time. And when somebody, a false prophet, somewhere, when it takes somebody who had been saved and sanctified, that angels worked on him, Jesus worked on him, the Holy Ghost worked on him, preachers worked on him, friends worked on him, before he got that experience in the Lord, and somebody, a false prophet somewhere, will grab that fellow and then take that person into the world, and it doesn't take one, it doesn't take two, it doesn't take three. If it takes multitude out of the narrow way and leads them into hellfire, his suffering in hellfire will be indescribable. That's what the Bible is saying. And that's why we're, that's why we're very serious about this matter. And it's the word of God. And look at this now. It's in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. Now you understand it. You understand what it's saying. It says, For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known each to turn from the only commandment delivered unto them. Point number three. The degrading sinfulness of the apostates and the backsliders. In verse 22, verse 22 it says, For it is, it is happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the soul, that's the pig, the, 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 the swine, that was washed to a wallowing in the mire. It is talking about somebody who had repented, because as you see the language here, this is the picture of those who are once saved, their repentance is likened to vomiting out what was in the belly. Confession and forsaking. Pouring all those things out. Oh Lord, I was a fornicator. I was um, a, an adulterer. I was a thief. I was a rogue. I was fraudulent. I pour everything out. I confess everything. I forsake everything. I will never go back into them anymore. That's a vomit. That's repentance. And then the cleansing in the blood of Jesus. He was washed. He was washed. He was cleansed. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, then we have fellowship with him. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now ye are clean through the word that has spoken unto you. And I will pour clean water upon you. And ye shall be clean. And from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. That's the cleansing. And it's saying that the soul, the pig that was washed, returned to the mire and to the death and to the pollution again. That's backsliding. And the dog that vomited out all those dirty, sinking things before went back to the vomit again. That's the backsliding. And then it says, it is happened unto them. According to this true proverb, a proverb that is true of the backsliders, that the dog is gone back to the vomit again and the pig that was washed goes back again rolling in the mud in the mire and the pig likes that backsliding and the dog likes the vomit again delights in it that's backsliding apostates and backsliders they rejoice in doing evil if you ever saw any of them they appear happier than we are because those of us who are still here, who are here in body and in spirit and in mind and in soul, who are here completely here, if you make a little mistake, you are sorrowful. If you mistakenly said something you shouldn't have said, you are having your, question, your quiet time, it comes to your mind, it, it makes you sorrowful. But these other people, they tell lies, they twist the word of God, they steal, they commit immorality. They do a lot of things. And they still come to their pulpit and say, Praise the Lord, hallelujah, it's going to be great today. Did you see those wonderful things that happened in our last weekend seminar? How the Lord just, you know, and how everything was so wonderful. And those people that were slain under the Spirit and the power of God, did you see those great, wonderful things? And this man, adultery is there. There's no conviction anymore. 
they delight in it they enjoy it what if you go by the side watch that dog watch that dog as that dog is eating the vomit again he's eating it with excitement and with joy and with delight as if it is not his own vomit and these backsliders that's how they enjoy those evil things that's why the lord is warning us once a person backslides the life of that person the kind of thing that that person does you will not know the person again the degrading sinfulness of apostates and the backsliders actually this this uh, proverb is coming from the proverbs proverbs chapter 26 look at it proverbs chapter 26 verses 11 and 12 proverbs chapter 26 verse 11 and verse 12 as a dog returneth to his vomit so a fool returneth to his folly seest thou a man wise in his own conceit there is more hope of a fool than of him as you are hearing all these words if you are there and you are wise in your own conceit and you are saying whatever they say i will do what i will do well you have heard you don't have any excuse you still go back to your vomit you still go back to your sin you still go back to your disobedience and sin whatever they say i will do what i will do you're like the dog that we're reading about you enjoy you delight in the vomit that came out of you before in jeremiah chapter 14 verse 10 jeremiah chapter 14 verse 10 thus says the lord unto this people those have they loved to wonder they love it they delight in it they enjoy it they have not refrained their feet therefore the lord does not accept them he will now remember their iniquity and visit their sins job chapter 15 verse 16 job 15 16 how much more abominable and filthy is man which drinketh iniquity like water drinketh iniquity like a thirsty man drinks water and enjoys it abominable abominable in the proverbs proverbs chapter 2 proverbs chapter 2 verse 13 through to verse 15 who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness these are backsliders who rejoice to do evil and they delight in the forwardness of the wicked whose ways are crooked and they forward in their paths second thessalonians chapter 2 second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 11 and verse 12 and for this cause, for this reason, God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. They had pleasure in unrighteousness. Others will be weeping for them. They'll be smiling. They'll be laughing as if there's no problem. What's the problem with this fellow? You know, so concerned and weeping. What, what, what's so great and what's so terrible in what I'm doing that they are so concerned and crying for me? As we are weeping for them, they are laughing and rejoicing because they think evil is all right for them. In Philippians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3, verse 18 and verse 19, for many walk of whom I have told you often, and now will tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, who glory in their shame, who mind as lessons. Psalm 125, verse 5. Psalm 125, verse 5. As for such as turn aside unto their crooked ways, that is, they have been redeemed before, saved before, on a narrow straight path that leads to the kingdom of God before, but now they turn aside unto their crooked ways. The Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. That is, they will eventually spend eternity with the workers of iniquity. In Job chapter 20, Job chapter 20, I'm reading to you from verse 12 first, then I'll back, 
I'll get back to verse 7. Job chapter 20, verse 12. Though wickedness be sweet in his mouth, though he hide it under his tongue. That is, these backsliders, wickedness becomes sweet in their mouths. Verse 7. Yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, Where is he? He shall fly away as a dream, and shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. The eye also which saw him shall see him no more. Neither shall his place any more behold him. Brothers and sisters and friends who are here tonight, here is the condition of apostates, backsliders, false prophets, and false teachers. And the Lord has brought this word to you so that you'll make a covenant with the Lord before you go. That by the grace of God, with the Lord helping you, you will not go back again. You will not go back again. Because if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through knowledge, the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, if they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Because it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them. According to the true proverb, the dog... The dog is turned to his vomit again. And the soul that was washed to a, to a wallowing in the mire. I will not go back. I said I will not go back. I said I will not go back. Why don't you rise up? When I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back anymore. Sing it out. When I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back anymore. No, 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 no. I will never go back anymore, anymore. No, 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 no. no. I will never go back anymore. Why don't you sing it again? When I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back, go back anymore. When I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back anymore. Everybody know. No, 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 Satan, I will never go back anymore. No, 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 I will never go back anymore. Why don't you tell the Lord that you'll never go back to the world again? No matter the enticement of the devil, no matter the temptation that comes your way, no matter the persecution, no matter the pressure, no matter anything that is happening today, I will never, I will never, I will never, I will never, I will never go back to the world anymore. You want to escape the judgment of God? You want to have the mercy of God? You want to keep on in the goodness of God? You want your name to remain in the book of life? No, no. No, 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 no. I will never go back to the world anymore. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Make your commitment to the Lord and say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I'm going to follow you through to the very end. I'll never go back to the world anymore. 